Hello, this is Dr. Yiming Gao, and I am a breast imager at NYU School of Medicine. I am pleased to be here with our first author, Dr. Stacy Wolfson, who is a chief resident of our program, to present a summary of our paper entitled Multiple Bilateral Circumscribed Masses at Screening Breast Ultrasound, Outcomes of New or Enlarging Masses at Follow-Up. This paper is currently in press and will be published in the AJR shortly. It is great to be here to share our results, which we hope will be helpful to you. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge our co-author, Dr. Samantha Heller, and our statistician, Dr. Jim Babb, without whom this work would not be possible. So let's begin with a little bit of background. Mammography screening is known to decrease mortality by about 30 to 40 percent. But that benefit does not extend equally to roughly half of our population who have dense breast tissue, where mammography has limited sensitivity. In addition to this, there is also inherently higher risk of cancer in women with dense breast tissue. For all these reasons, we're increasingly using sub supplemental ultrasound to help us increase sensitivity in cancer detection. And prior data have shown ultrasound to be able to capture an additional three to four typically small node negative invasive cancers per 1,000 exams after negative mammograms, but at a trade-off of limited specificity and false positive findings. A typical false positive finding is a mass shown here that is oval shaped with circumscribed margins and oriented parallel to the skin. This is a classically benign lesion, typically representing a fibroadenoma or complicated cyst and has a low likelihood of malignancy. When encountered as a solitary or single lesion, whether palpable or not, prior data consistently showed a small uh, risk of malignancy with malignancy rate well below one to 2%. And therefore this is a classically BIRADS3 finding. And when encountered as multiple bilateral uh, findings, this is even uh, associated with even lower likelihood of malignancy. In fact, multiple bilateral circumscribed masses on mammography is treated as a benign finding because prior data show uh, no increase in interval cancer rate when treating such lesions as a BIRADS2 finding. And similarly, at ultrasound, Prior data from Akron 6666 trial showed us also a 0% malignancy rate at ultrasound with the confidence interval extending to about 2% at the upper end. And so for all these reasons, multiple bilateral circumscribed masses are essentially treated as benign and annual imaging follow-up is in general uh, recommended at ultrasound. However, as more women undergo annual ultrasound screening, we're also increasingly encountering new or enlarging uh, circumscribed or oval masses um, on subsequent follow-up exams. And these often result in biopsy. And while management of multiple bilateral circumscribed masses as an entity itself is well-established, there are no data pertaining specifically to the outcomes of the subsequently developed new or enlarging masses. And how to manage these findings is currently unknown. So the goal of this study is to assess outcomes of new or enlarging oval circumscribed parallel masses in the setting of multiple bilateral circumscribed masses at sequential rounds of ultrasound screening. And Dr. Wolfson will now take us through the details of our study. Hi, I'm Dr. Wolfson, and I will begin with the study methods. This is an IRB-approved HIPAA-compliant study from the time period of 2014 to 2019. We performed a retrospective review of women found to have multiple bilateral circumscribed masses on screening ultrasound examination. We followed patient-level exams over multiple years to examine any new, enlarging, or changed masses. For inclusion criteria, we included women without any symptoms, those who underwent screening ultrasound with or without concurrent mammogram, and women with at least 12 months of follow-up were included. Women with concurrent abnormal mammogram were excluded, those with prior mastectomy, those patients 
that were pregnant or lactating, those under the age of 18 years old, and those that were lost to follow-up. Handheld whole breast ultrasound exams were performed by certified breast sonographers. Radiologist oversight was available as needed during the study time period. Exams were interpreted by 16 fellowship trained breast radiologists with varying levels of experience. Radiologist experience level was further classified as novice if they had less than five years or experience if five or more years of practice. Now for some lesion definitions. Multiple bilateral circumscribed masses are those with benign features. They have an oval shape, circumscribed margins, and parallel orientation. Simple cysts are not considered part of this multiple bilateral circumscribed mass definition and are not regarded as new, enlarging, or changed during this study. A minimum of three similar oval circumscribed parallel masses demonstrating homogeneous internal echo texture with at least one mass in each breast must be present. A new or enlarging oval circumscribed parallel mass shares the same morphology with and is considered part of this definition of multiple bilateral circumscribed masses. We modeled this definition of multiple bilateral circumscribed masses after the Akron 6666 trial. In short, we included solid masses or complicated cysts within our lesion definition. In contrast to oval circumscribed parallel masses as just defined, Unique findings are different. They are non-oval, non-circumscribed masses with this, that are specifically distinct from this multiple bilateral circumscribed mass definition. These can include any number of shapes or irregular margins as detailed by this slide. In this study, unique findings may be new or reflect a mass that has changed from prior classification. This is similar to previously described solitary lesions in the Akron trial. We searched our database using keywords to identify our study cohort. Once we identified the baseline exam with multiple bilateral circumscribed masses, then we prospectively evaluated each individual and subsequent ultrasound exams to see if there were any interval changes. While the initial inclusion specified no mammographic abnormality, for cases that developed new or enlarging masses, we did correlate with mammography. Reference standard was biopsy result with radiology pathology concordance or at least 12 months of ultrasound follow-up. Outcomes were also reported for those lesions with at least 24 months of follow-up. Statistical analysis was performed. During our study time period, over 48,000 bilateral screening ultrasound exams were performed in over 11,000 women. Of these, 284 women had multiple bilateral circumscribed masses, about 2.4% of the total screened women. Over the study period, 134 of these women had stable masses, while 150 women, a little over 50%, developed new, enlarging, or changed masses. Of these 150 women that developed new, enlarging, or changed masses, there were 465 masses. A majority of these, 408 of these, were oval masses, while 57 were considered unique masses. Of the oval masses, the majority of these were followed, 83%, while uh, approximately 17% underwent biopsy. Most importantly, for all oval masses that were either followed with imaging or biopsied, zero cancers were detected. This is different than the unique masses in which majority of these were biopsied, approximately 68%, and of those biopsy lesions, four cancers were detected. Of the 284 women with multiple bilateral circumscribed masses, the mean age was 46 years old. For the subset of women with concurrent mammography, we were able to evaluate breast density. As expected, the majority had dense breasts. Specifically, 21% had extremely dense breast parenchyma, 63% had heterogeneously dense breast parenchyma, while approximately 15% had scattered fibroglandular tissue and less than 1% had entirely fatty breasts. Here are some of the characteristics of women who had multiple bilateral circumscribed masses in our cohort. The majority of our cohort did not have family history or genetic mutation. 
younger age was associated with a higher likelihood of developing new or enlarging masses. Breast density and hormonal factors were not found to be associated with the development of new or enlarging masses. Masses that are not oval are more likely to be biopsied than those that are oval masses. Masses that demonstrate interval change was also an independent predictor of biopsy. The likelihood of biopsy recommendation was not associated with age, mammographic density, breast cancer risk factors, or radiologist experience level. Malignancy rate among the biopsied oval circumscribed parallel masses was 0%. All biopsy results were benign and concordant. Most commonly, these biopsy results yielded fibroadenoma and fibrocystic change. Among the enlarging masses, these tended to be relatively small with a median size of 1.2 centimeters. The increase in volume that triggered biopsy was approximately 43% over a six to 12 month interval. As mentioned previously, unique findings with more suspicious features are more likely to be biopsied regardless of radiologist experience level. Of the unique masses that were biopsied, four cancers were detected and the rest were ben had benign pathology as listed here. Of the unique lesions that were not biopsied, these were benign at imaging follow-up. As you can see, three cancers occurred in older women while one occurred in a premenopausal woman. Three cases of cancer were new masses while one was a changed mass. All were small and no negative breast cancers. Here is an example of an irregular mass in a 60 year old woman. This was a new mass. And as you can see, the margins are not well circumscribed. An ultrasound guided core biopsy yielded invasive ductal carcinoma of this lesion. Here is an example of a younger woman who initially had a septated cyst. Subsequently, after four years, this developed irregular, an irregular solid component as well as calcifications, which can be visualized on mammography. Due to these changes, ultrasound guided core biopsy was performed, which yielded invasive ductal carcinoma and ductal carcinoma in situ. With that, I will hand you back to Dr. Gao. Thank you, Dr. Wolfson. I hope we have been able to show you that it is important to carefully scrutinize features of each mass at ultrasound as we also identified four cancers in our study in women with multiple bilateral circumscribed masses. With that in mind, new or enlarging oval circumscribed parallel masses in women with multiple bilateral circumscribed masses were very common, developing in over half of our women in the cohort and overwhelmingly benign with a 0% malignancy rate. Despite this, in our study, about 17% of these masses still underwent biopsy. When treating the new or enlarging oval masses as a part of fluctuating multiple bilateral circumscribed masses, the overall malignancy rate is also 0%, which is consistent with prior findings of the Akron trial therefore suggesting that follow-up is a safe alternative to biopsy. And as previously described, the vast majority of our cases had at least 24 months of follow-up. I think it's important to note that nearly all of our cases of multiple bilateral circumscribed masses are ultrasound-only findings not seen at mammography. Hence, on average, the lesion size uh, is quite small. The median increase in size associated with biopsy is about 43% in volume change over six to 12 months, with at least half of the lesions falling within the previously established allowable benign growth of fibroadenomas in the literature of about 15% volume increase per month. A word of caution about the need to carefully evaluate masses on ultrasound, because as we all know, small rapidly growing tumors can mimic circumscribed masses. And particularly, I think it's important to err on the side of caution when you're encountering new or irregular masses in older individuals, certainly three out of four cancers in our study occurred in postmenopausal women. And of course, as you know, BRCA mutation carriers, particularly BRCA1 carriers, 
are more prone to rapidly growing tumors with pushing borders that could also mimic circumscribed masses when they're small in size. So again, err on the side of caution. And anytime there is concurrent mammographic abnormality that develops with a new or enlarging mass, uh, I think the level of concern should be increased. So here are some limitations of our study. Of course, this is limited to a single center retrospective study. And we reviewed uh, medical records to identify our cases of change, uh, which were followed by direct imaging review. And uh, a small subset of our patients had limited duration of follow-up of under 24 months. But as you recall from methods, all of our patients had at least 12 months of imaging follow-up. And uh, therefore, uh, further and larger studies are needed to validate our results. And we look forward to these additional studies. So in summary, we found a 0% malignancy rate in new or enlarging oval circumscribed masses on ultrasound in women with multiple bilateral circumscribed masses. And when criteria are strictly applied, fluctuating oval circumscribed masses appear to be a common benign uh, pattern in the setting of multiple bilateral circumscribed masses. And biopsy can be safely averted when encountering these lesions in this particular setting. And of course, concurrent new irregular masses uh, or previously oval masses that develop suspicious features should be carefully evaluated for malignancy. Thank you so much for your interest and attention.